clicked on the right video. This video is about why Darwin was right. My name is Jerry Swaffer and I have a PhD in mechanical engineering. I'm a robotics engineer and educator. I, I've done research in artificial intelligence. So if you hear all of that and you don't, this is your first time meeting me, I'm a science person. I have degrees in engineering, do a lot of stuff with artificial intelligence and robotics. And so me saying that Darwin is right about something is something that probably doesn't mean anything to you. But those of you who do know me might say, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Aren't you a Christian? And you're saying Darwin was right? Well, actually, I am. Now, if you haven't read On the Origin of Species, then you might not be familiar with some of the things I'm going to be talking about. But I actually have read it. And there are a lot of people I, I come across that haven't read his book, but are, are ready to call a lot of the things he says facts. And so because I've read his book, I do know that there is something that he's right about. There are other things that I disagree with. That's for another video. Today, I want to talk about why Darwin was right. So I want to start with saying that he was a polarizing figure. He is a polarizing figure today. Either you're somebody that really loves Darwin or you're somebody that really hates Darwin. And there are a lot of reasons for this. One of them is uh, that if you look at the subtitle of his book, on the origin of species. People often just call it the origin of species, but it's on the origin of species. He's talking about this idea of species arise, arising by means of natural selection. But if you look closer at that subtitle, it says, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Now, some of you might say, well, no, no, he, when he said races, he wasn't talking about races the way we mean races today. And that's only partially true. He, he did think of he did use the term in a wider sense, but it doesn't exclude the narrower sense by which we often use the word races. Now, by the way, there's only one race. There's the human race and all of the other stuff is really ethnicity, as far as I can tell. So this idea of race really comes from racism rather than being a product of racism. So or it is a product of racism. It is not something from which racism comes. So Darwin is a polarizing figure for people who are opponents of evolution. They think of him as being the guy that teaches that everybody comes from apes. And that's only kind of part of the theory, but that's kind of a caricature of it. It is a, a way to, to really shut people down. If you are, you know, someone who's a believer like myself, then it's easy to find people that just say, oh, he's the guy that thinks everybody came from monkeys. But there's this other extreme where there are people who are proponents of evolution, people who, who, basically deify Darwin. If you've not come across a bumper sticker or a decal that people put on their cars that has what is often called the Jesus fish, but with Darwin's name in it and feet on it, if you haven't seen that yet, then good for you because it really is a troll for people to do this. And I'm going to do a completely different video just talking about how disrespectful that is and really talking about what the fish symbol was used for by Christians and how it's been co-opted in this really bizarre way where they're deifying Darwin. Nevertheless, he is someone who is a proponent of evolution, or there are many people who are proponents of evolution who really prop him up. And so what I want to talk about today, though, is why he was right about something. And so before I get there, we have to talk a little bit about this word evolution. And, and there is something called theistic evolution, and this is the idea uh, that's really being made fun of here by the people at Answers in Genesis. This is from like 25 years ago. It's a comic that essentially says, uh, shows what people mean when they generally think of evolution. It's this idea of there being an amoeba that turns into like a salamander or something that turns into an ape, then a Neanderthal, and then finally the people we know as humans today. And that's essentially the idea that from very simple organisms came something that was far more complex. And this makes fun of that. Uh, it makes fun of people that would claim to believe in God who also want to combine evolution with that. And so there is this spectrum where you have people, it's interesting, they put like flat earthers and geocentrists in there, which has not really anything to do with creationism or not. And so then you put young earth creationism and then these other versions that get all the way down to atheistic evolution. The thing you'll notice is that if you look at where the theistic evolution is, it's really just a step away from atheistic evolution. And 
honestly, those people who are theistic evolutionists are in a really tough spot because everybody, let's say above them on this framework, looks at them and says, you don't believe in the Bible. And everybody below them, which are all the atheists say, why are you believing in God? Like evolution means you don't believe in God. And I think the atheists are right. And in many ways, I think the theists or the Christians are right as well, that the theistic evolutionists should either come up here with us who believe in creation, or they should go along with the people who believe in evolution, but they're really trying to, uh, somehow hold on to both ideas and they're just, those ideas are incompatible. But I bring this up because there is a phrase that's on this chart called special creation. And this is what I need to talk a little bit more about before we get to what Darwin was right about this idea of special creation. If you look and you see everybody above that dotted line there, so the young earth creationists, and then these other people, geocentrists are just people that believe that the earth is the center of everything and everything revolves around it. And flat earthers, of course, believe that the earth is uh, much flatter than we are led to believe by uh, whoever is, is telling they would say that everything out here is propaganda. I'm not here to get into that, but essentially, I don't know why those, I think those things are put there to disparage people who believe in a young earth and people who believe in creation. So that's the only reason why I could see them putting that on there. So what we would call special creation today is different. The point I'm making here is that it's different than what people would have called it during the time of Darwin. Nowadays, everybody believes in that believes in creation, believe that everything came from God, but it's not the same as the way they believed in the time of Darwin. We're going to talk about what they believed during the time of Darwin in a second, but essentially creationists believe that God made everything in six 24 hour day, roughly 24 hour days, which is what we see in, in the book of Genesis in the Bible, Genesis chapter one and two. And we could talk, we, if you want to talk more about why it must have been regular days rather than not, we could do that in another video. But if you, if you look here, there's a quote here that says uh, that for fundamentalists, special creation follows from a literal reading of the Genesis creation narrative. There is a special creation of each separate kind in six 24 hour days, starting a few thousand years ago. Now, this is an important point that when you look at Genesis chapter one, it talks about different kinds. So here's what Darwin has to say about the independent creation of each species. He says that the ordinary view of each species is that each has been independently created. And so he asked the question, why should that part of the structure, which differs from the same part in other independently created species of the same genus, be more variable than those parts which are closely alike in the several species? I do not see that any explanation can be given. What he's essentially saying is, if you take two species from the same genus, it doesn't make sense that one part of one of them is different from that same type of part in the other one, but they're alike in all of these other different parts. And so to him, it didn't make sense that the same, if let's say everything was independently created, it doesn't make sense to make two things that are basically exactly the right alike, but have one thing that's different. So we'll talk more about that in a second, but that was his view. Now, the thing about this is if you go to Genesis chapter one, there's nothing there that says that everything, every single species and variation was made in the first week of creation. What it says is that it uses this phrase several times, according to their own kinds, according to its kind, according to their kinds. It uses that phrase over and over again. Now, what is a kind? Well, we don't know exactly what a kind is. We can be pretty sure that it's not a species. And so therefore the idea that people had in the 1850s and earlier that basically God created every single, what we would call species is really not what the scripture says. It just says that each kind of thing was created. So that if we're looking at how you might have these different classifications, what exactly is it? Is it a genus? Is it a family that he was making? It doesn't say exactly. So it's interesting in this uh, Wikipedia post, about created kinds there's this there's this thing that's interesting here it says here old earth creationists also employ the concept rejecting the fact 
of universal common descent, while not necessarily accepting a literal interpretation of a global flood or a six day creation in the last 10,000 years. Both groups accept that some lower level microevolutionary change occurs within the biblically created kinds. Now, this is an important point because there is no one who actually says, I believe in what we would call, let's say, what I would call actual evolution, which is microevolutionary change. That's what's said there. No one says, I believe in that. Everyone admits that that happens. You can look at one of the things that Darwin brings up in his book is that when you breed different animals, you create these new types or these new, I don't want to say kinds because we're talking, using the word kind in a different way here, but you're creating new types of animals that didn't occur before. We do this with plants. A lot of the fruit that we have now is not the same as fruit from a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. So we're literally coming up with different varieties that were not created at the very beginning. But that's not the point. The point is not that you can't have small changes among the same kinds of things. The entire idea is this thing that's said here in the Wikipedia article. It calls universal common descent a fact, which is a really interesting thing. As far as I can tell, it's not just not a fact. It's an anti-truth. It's the opposite of a fact. Universal common descent is a, as an assumption that atheists make. And so the idea that everything must have come from one thing is precisely the kind of extrapolation that Darwin made that he's wrong about. And so what he was opposing, what he's right about is that there were people at the time that were saying every single species, every single variation, if there's a dog with these kinds of spots, then God must have made a dog with those kinds of spots at the very beginning of time. And not that he might've made a kind of animal that over time there were changes that made it into the dog with spots. Darwin was saying, well, no, I don't think that's how it, how it, how it was. We can see that we can see species changing over time. And now no one even disputes that idea. And so the problem is not that it, the problem is not that if we look at this idea of each species having been independently created, I think the reason why people believe that back, back then is that they were afraid that a person might go to the opposite extreme away from saying God created things to the place where they might say that God didn't create anything. That's kind of what Darwin did. So people trying to guard against a person going off the deep end believed in something that actually wasn't true itself. And so Darwin in part was saying, no, every single variation in species that you see today was not independently created. We can look at this, the evidence and see that that's not the case. But I think there were a lot of people at the time afraid of what might happen if you moved away from this idea of every single thing must have been created just like this at the beginning of time. So Darwin corrected that and he said, no, it wasn't every single thing. And now today, all people that would call themselves creationists understand that we see things like variations and different breeds of dog. And those, all of those were not there at the very beginning, that there was a kind of animal that gave rise to all of the different types of breeds of dogs, for instance problem with Darwin is he was right about that, but then he went too far. And this thing that people in the Wikipedia article are calling universal common de descent, they're saying that's a fact. That's actually one of the things he was wrong about. And in the next video in this particular series, when we're talking about Darwin, we're going to talk about universal common descent and that Darwin was wrong about that. And that that is actually not a fact at all. It is an anti-truth. It's the opposite of what has actually happened. Just to give you a hint, there wasn't universal common descent, but there was universal common des designer. So we're going to talk more about that in the next video, but until that time, thanks for watching.